want to take advantage of this, what they can do is they can focus in on these common thoughts of billions of people. They can then concentrate that energy because all that energy is concentrated on one idea. It's all energy. Uh, in this case, it was re uh, religious energy where people, billions of people, are concentrating on the idea of Jesus and Christianity. That energy then was uh, taken and redirected by these other ETs and was used to create this energy block around Mr. G. So what Billy was running up against was actually the concentrated force of thought of billions of people being used for rather wicked devices. Mr. G then was feeling somehow that he was in touch with a beautiful higher spiritual life force, which he wasn't. He was merely being manipulated by some other wicked intelligence. So uh, Patah was explaining this to Billy and explaining that under no circumstances should Billy make any attempt to contact Mr. G or let him know at all that he had tried to interfere. They didn't want to take the chance of whatever uh, was causing this energy force getting back to Billy and getting a hold of him or any of the members of the group. Okay, we're up to the 88th contact. It's Monday, October 17th, 1977. This contact, uh, like many that will come after it, start becoming more and more involved just with the lives of the group members. Billy's making a really uh, difficult effort here to form this group, get the bylaws together, and uh, get everybody living under one uh, set of guidelines and uh, you have all these personalities to come in together and things are proving very difficult. Also we see the Pleiadians getting more and more involved in the personalities and the thought processes of all of the members starting to offer opinions and uh, so forth about what Billy should do. Patah uh, is asked, asked it about protecting Billy from the inner vo uh, these energy forces that are surrounding Mr. G this uh, violet colored energy thing that's very powerful. As it turned out was um, she um, didn't have too many suggestions but had some plans for a device that could be built which would kind of diffuse those energies. And Quetzal built a uh, device like that and installed it in the telemeter device that's floating over uh, Billy's house and informed him that uh, no longer should you really have to worry about uh, the problems from those energies that they should attack Billy, the telemeter device, then would somehow protect him. As just an aside here, if you happen to read Perry read Rodin books, the science fiction paperbacks from Europe, uh, Billy had asked if there was any connection between the author and if he'd had any contacts. And uh, he was kind of surprised to find out, yes, that the man who writes the Perry Rodin science fiction books in Europe uh, was quite often inspired by extraterrestrials, although he himself was not aware of it. Well, not too long after that, a rather unusual thing happened at the house. Billy was um, walking Claire out one night to leave, and they heard a strange sound by the house, and kind of spooked Claire, and she hopped in her car and uh, took off. Uh, Billy, after Claire left, Billy went in the house and got his flashlight, his tape recorder, and actually got his gun. He was getting pretty spooked by all this uh, talk about security and people trying to take his life and so forth, so he was kind of on his toes. Well, he walks out in front of the house, and he's listening very carefully for the noise, and he puts the tape recorder on a fence post, and he's listening. He just stands there and listens, and he hears this sound. Urg and he doesn't know quite what to make of it. Merg. And uh, the uh, suddenly he sees uh, somebody walking slowly towards him, and he can barely see in the dark. And uh, it's the shape of a woman, and he looks closely and sees it has very long fingers. Right away he can tell this is not a, a normal human being. Uh, this, this deals somehow with some sort of extraterrestrial. Well, as the being gets a little bit closer, Billy not only notices it has long fingers, but has an unusual looking head and face, which kind of look like uh, uh, an aquarium sort of person, like a water woman or some kind, uh, you know, almost like a fish sort of head. Well, Billy's a little cautious and doesn't know what's going on, and so he just reaches down and cocks his gun. And just as he does that, this being just disappears immediately. So he's telling uh, Simyasi and Quetzal about this, wondering if they have any idea what's going on. So he explains all about what happened and how he pulled his gun, and he may have acted too quickly. 
and that uh, after he thought about it, that uh, and he listened to the tape recording, because on the tape recording was the sound this creature was making, which was merg, merg. Billy ascertained, because of his large knowledge of symbol language and sounds, that this what this being was saying probably was the word peace and that he probably overreacted because he was so sensitive about uh, someone threatening his life that he probably ran off a uh, very peaceful being here and he was feeling kind of bad about it. Well, it didn't take too long for Pata to find out, yes, indeed, that was true, that uh, whatever this being was, uh, was trying to come peacefully, and they suggested in case they returned that uh, Billy be very peaceful, which he said, of course, <laughs> that he would. It turned out these beans were called Cygnians, C-Y-G-N-I-A-N-S. They were from a very far away race, and apparently what had happened is their ship, when coming to Earth, uh, their drive system had gone out, and that uh, for two years they had floated rather aimlessly in space and made it to Earth. And when they came into Earth, um, apparently the telemeter devices didn't pick up the ships coming in by some freak accident of radiation of some type. And their ship had landed. They still had some power sources, apparently, because they were able to screen the ship and the Pleiadians were not able to find them. So apparently one of the uh, Signians, uh, they were trying to find someone to contact on the planet to help them out because their drive system was damaged. On Pata explained that on the Signian world, that they uh, that these beings were more animalistic than they were human, and they still live by the herd principle. Like you would have reindeer or buffalo, where they have a, the leader of the herd is the strongest, and so forth. Well, this was still happening on their planet, and because of this, uh, this herd mentality, which had slowly evolved on their world to more of a wisdom system. Uh, they were used to looking to the person with the strongest vibrations and strongest mental abilities to be the leader. And this had attracted them to Billy. And this is why they had come to Billy. So Billy started to feel kind of foolish that he had run someone off and scared someone off, someone who had uh, actually come and help. <laughs> well, it took them just a little while to find the Signians, and Pata contacted uh, their home planet back home and uh, to see what they could do about repairing their busted engine. turns out that the uh, ships they were flying were quite old. It had been a present to them almost 4,000 years back that the Signians themselves were very non-mechanical and didn't have a clue on how to fix it. Not to mention the drive systems were unusual also to the Pleiadians, and they weren't sure how to repair it and didn't have any parts for it, so it was going to take some time to do that. Apparently the... Um, uh, Signian that had come to Billy, uh, her name was Asina. The Pleiadians eventually uh, found uh, the Signians in their ship and took them to their station in Switzerland and put them up there for a few months while they got their ship fixed. Well, Billy, feeling pretty poorly about the way he had treated this Signian that had come to help, uh, said he'd sure like to meet her and express his, uh, you know, uh, his sorrow had been so abrupt with her, and it was arranged that he could do that. He finally meets Asina and gets to take his uh, picture of Asina, this rather unusual being from another world. Okay, we're up to the 92nd contact now, and this is on Wednesday, November 23rd, 1977. Billy gets on his moped, and he's riding out to the uh, spot where he's supposed to meet them, and he's, he's really not feeling very well at all. Out of all this worry and concern about uh, possible attacks by the FATH and other energies that may be bothering the members of the group, he's been trying very hard to protect them. There are 11 other people sleeping in the house, and what Billy's been doing is he's been staying up every night while they sleep, and he's been staying awake spiritually to protect them. He guards their subconscious on the astral plane so outside influences can't get in to bother them. And then, of course, he has to sleep for a few hours, and everybody's up again for the day. Well, you combine this with the work of uh, running the center, doing the man physical work, having contacts, and doing the writing, he's wearing.